you've been in the party for a long time. You've been an MP, I think, for more than a decade. You've seen the highs and lows. I guess, what do you think when you see that they're, they're coming forth in a list of donations? I mean, that must be pretty worrying for you. Um, I haven't been paying a huge amount of attention to, you know, who's who's giving what at the moment, to be honest. I've been out on the streets, probably like most candidates, talking to my constituents and trying to make the case um, for them to vote for who they think will be the best MP. So I, I don't know nearly as much as you guys have who've probably been pouring over the details of who's been giving what. Well, uh, yeah, totally understandable that you've been on the doorstep. I can tell you, um, basically, what we're seeing is kind of donors abandoning the party, less than £300,000 in the second week of the election uh, campaign. That's the fourth, um, uh, nearly half what reform got, lower than the Lib Dems and uh, mm. the Labour Party, significantly less than the Labour Party. Um, I guess, you know, why, why are donors abandoning the Conservative Party? Uh, well, as as I say, I really don't know a great deal uh, about who's who's giving, who isn't giving. Um, but I do know that we had a sizable well, war chest, and it's and it's quite enough to fight a very decent campaign. And by now, people will have already um, reached, or will be quite close to reaching, the maximum spending limits in their constituencies. So the sort of air fire of who's spending more on uh, I, I don't know adverts online or something. Um, I'm not sure all of that necessarily reaches through to people on the street in the way that some people imagine it might. OK, but, you know, it does it, it does matter because it go, money does mean something. It kind of gives you a sense of the direction of travel and donors often want to back a winner. So, you know, what do you think? The, is there anything now that the government can do to get people back on side? Because it does just feel now like, you know, is this party the walking dead? I just, I just think this, this thing that uh, people on the streets that I've been knocking on um, ever bring up who's donated how much um, is, is, to be honest, um, very much a Westminster type issue. Uh, people on the doorstep here are very interested in practical solutions to challenges they see or projects that are ongoing. And, and that's what they're asking about. Now, there are some, of course, who are watching the TV and all the debates and uh, might be um, listening to you tonight and so on. But for a lot of people, actually, politics is not their first and major concern, but they are interested in trust and who their MP is and whether they can trust him or her. And of course, they're interested in who the government is going to be and whether they can trust them as well. And that's where I think the issues around taxation, around what people are going to do about immigration, these are the sort of issues that people are raising on the doorstep. And trust is absolutely critical to that. You're right about trust. And on trust, you know, four people linked to the Prime Minister are being looked into over bets allegedly placed about the election date. Uh, is that is that the kind of party that you want to be part of? You know, what, what do you make of that? And you, you said when Rishi Sunak came into power, it was time for integrity and stability. You know, it just doesn't feel like it's been very stable, does it? Well, actually, I think since he became Prime Minister, I think there is a lot more stability. And I think we can see that his economic judgments have been proved true time and time again. The latest figures on inflation are have shown that not as he not only has he just effectively presided over a government that's been able to halve inflation, but it's come down from 11 to 2 percent. So I think on that and the question of who is the right person to leave the country's economic future, I'm, I'm in no doubt, and quite a lot of my constituents are in no doubt, small businesses included, that the combination of Ricci and Jeremy Hunt as Chancellor is a very stable one. On the question of integrity, I again, absolutely no question at all about the Prime Minister's integrity. The issues that you refer to, I understand, are all being looked into by an independent body. And obviously, if something has been done that was illegal, then, you know, the force of the law comes in. But I do think that we should wait and they see uh, what actually you know, has been proven on this. Because it's not, you know, it's not all illegal. It's just a case of who knew what when. Well, Craig Williams has admitted to putting, uh, as he put it, a flutter on the election date. You know, we've seen people kicked out of the party before an investigation has ended before. Should these people be kicked out of the party as a prime minister being tough enough? Well, I think he's done exactly the right thing. Um, what we're not talking about here is, you know, serious sexual impropriety or anything like that. What we're talking about may be a significant misjudgment. But if it's illegal, as I say, then obviously the punishments do follow. There's no question of that. 
I guess it just feels like one of the problems for the public is that they don't really know what the Conservative Party stands for anymore. The people that I've interviewed, people in government that have said, um, or people that used to be in government that say they'd like to welcome Nigel Farage, and then you've got others who say that that would tear the party apart. I mean, you know, is this a party of Nigel Farage or is it is it a more left-wing party? I think, do you accept that part yeah. of the problem has been that the Conservative Party doesn't seem to really know what it is anymore? The Conservative Party absolutely knows what it is, and as a, an elected board member, I can I can you know give my absolute word for that. And I haven't changed, and nor have the people who are voting for me in Gloucester. They haven't changed either. What they've always wanted to see is a a party that's a broad church. And as somebody described it the other day, you know, an aircraft needs two wings. It needs a left and a right wing. That's the same for the Labour Party. It's the same for the Conservatives. And there are significant differences within all parties, including the Greens and the Lib Dems. You're going to have different views. I probably only, my wife probably only agrees with me half the time if I'm lucky on uh, a lot of issues. So we get, we're going to have to have a broad church in which we can I mean, disagree say... agreeably. And that that's the crucial thing. We've we, we all got to be able to disagree agreeably. That is the nature of democracy. So whether uh, Nigel Farage is a member of the party or not a member of the party, apart from anything else, is largely up to him. At the moment, okay, he's standing sorry, as a quickly, candidate we're for running the Reform out of time, Party. But... He's not but a member you, you, of the Conservative Party. You say it needs to be a broad church. I spoke to David Gork last week, who used to be mm. in Cabinet. He says he's not even going to vote Conservative um, because he's because he's on the left of the party. I mean, that doesn't sound like a broad church if you're losing people like that, does it? David, unfortunately, um, voted for things, which meant that he was suspended from the party. I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying five years ago. Um, that is quite a long time. You know, he, he's been on a journey too. And I'm sorry that he's not with us. Um, I got a lot of respect for him. And it's perfectly possible to respect people from other parties as well. That is the nature of being a conservative, is it doesn't have to be particularly party political. We are people who believe in getting things done and doing them in the best way possible. And wherever the ideas come from, we have absorbed them. That's why we're the longest running political party and why we will go on. Um, but we are going to have to face some political reality in this election, and not all of us are going to be coming back. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're all wrong. OK, Richard Graham, thanks so much um, for speaking to us on The Hub this evening. We appreciate